God we crucify, we establish the truth. It is through the word and the spirit of that truth that brings established truth. In that established truth, your flesh is crucified. As your flesh is crucified, your spiritual man rises again. Or you can allow your mind to be transformed into the mind of Christ to where you don't think, you don't act, you don't speak your way, but you speak under the anointing of God. See, the church is built on revelation. And, and Peter had the revelation directly from heaven. If you're getting revelation from anything else or anybody else, and it's not coming from heaven, come I'm on. speaking the word of life and letting God's word come out of our mouth because there's power in the word of the living God. Hallelujah. So about you, but I feel an army, amen, getting ready to be deployed. We're getting ready to see revival like we ain't never seen. There's a hunger starting to rise in the armies of God. They're ready for some meat. They're ready for some work. They're ready for some spirit. They're ready for some anointing. They're ready for some power. They're ready for the word of God. Yeah, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, we are here to the last and final service of Apostles Conference 23. We've had some friends go home, but we're glad you're here tonight. And we're going to have a great time in the Lord Tonight, I think, is going to be one of the best nights of the conference thus far. And let me tell you why. I'm very excited to have my very good friend speaking tonight, Apostle Larry Fisher. And I, I, took, I took liberty in my scheduling to schedule him for tonight. I wanted him to be the one to end this conference. And the reason being is because the last thing I wanted to do was to leave full. And I know I will with my brother. Praise God. But you're going to enjoy him. The thing I love about Apostle Fisher, he's going to preach you the truth. He's going to preach the word. You're not going to care if your feelings get hurt. He's going to preach you the truth. Amen? And that's okay. Well, let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer. We're glad you're here. I'm Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover. This is my beautiful wife, Apostle Jenny. And what about you guys ready for some X level? Come on, you got some X level up in this house. All right, here's Sister Jenny. She's going to open him. All right. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> All right, I want y'all to stand up to your feet tonight. We get a great chance to roar tonight. And I want you to grab somebody's hand that you're learning to love. <laughs> the moment of honesty. <laughs> All right, let's lift up our hands to the Lord. Father, we thank you. For all that you've done during this season time, Lord, we give you the glory tonight. And Father, we are asking tonight that you bring forth a powerful revelation. Lord, I pray that your anointing will shake us up. Father, put that X level inside of us. Cause every one of us to roar like we've never roared. And let the whole church say amen and amen. I had to play for the plant. I love everybody. <laughs> All right. Who's ready to praise the Lord? Let's get it together. All right. Again, courtesy of Apostle uh, Lorenzo Irving, who had to fly back to Chicago this morning. Would you please welcome... All of our teams combined with our opening processional.
Thank you, Lord. Victorious. I decree it. Amen. Praise God. I'll tell you, I thank God for them. They haven't gotten tired yet. They're still, <laughs> praise God. Thank you, Lord. Got to be the Holy Ghost, right? <laughs> praise the Lord. God bless you. All right, let's get ready to lift up and praise the Lord. Get your hands up. Get your hearts up. Let's worship God. Here's our praise and worship team tonight under the direction of prophetess Sandra Cardenas. Praise the Lord. How many of you are ready to praise the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. We have much to give praise unto the Lord. So I want you to step up to the front. Get some, uh, get around where you have some room. Put, I hope you have your dancing shoes on because we're going to praise the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory and the praise. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father. God is calling us to spread the gospel and to carry a revival to the ends of the earth. So open up the shorelines, a new wave is coming, the wave of revival to the ends of the earth. gospel and to carry a revival to the ends of the earth. So open up the shorelines, a new wave is coming, the wave of revival to the ends of the earth. The wave of the Holy Spirit never gonna stop. The wave of the Holy Spirit never gonna stop. The wave of the Holy Spirit never gonna stop. Never gonna stop. Jump in the wave of the Spirit. Come see what eyes haven't seen yet. Move with the power in the heaven. Rise up and come alive. Jump in the wave of the Spirit. Come. See what eyes haven't seen yet move with the current of heaven. Rise up and come alive. Oh, 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 to spread the gospel and to carry a revival to the ends of the earth. So open up the shorelines, a new wave is coming, the wave of revival oh, yeah. to the ends of the earth. The wave of the Holy Spirit never gonna stop. The wave of the Holy Spirit never the gonna wave stop. Of the, the wave of the Holy Spirit is never, never gonna, gonna stop. stop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Never gonna stop. Jump in the wave of the Spirit. Come see what eyes haven't seen yet. Move with the current of heaven. Rise up and come alive. Jump in the wave of the Spirit. Come see what eyes haven't seen yet. Move with the current of heaven. Rise up and come alive. Oh, 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 oh. oh come on, we need to rise up today. We need to rise up today.
dead is coming to life. It's coming to life. It's coming to life. to be released <laughs> and there's a revival that's burning in me it's, oh, it's burning it's burning it's burning <laughs> and there's a revival <laughs> that's burning in me the spirit's alive with the faith to receive the signs that follow those who will believe and there's a revival that's burning in me and there's a fire there's a fire there's a fire There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my bones. There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my bones. There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my bones. There's a revival that's burning in me. The power within to set the people free. And it's a power to change our history. And there's a revival that's a burden in me. There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my bones. There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my bones. There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my bones. There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my bones. We gotta let it out, yeah. We gotta let it out, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
all y'all know this has been a wonderful conference. But it's not over yet. That Holy Ghost is in the house right now. He's moving all around him. The Master Smith is blowing on the coals right now. The fire's burning bigger and brighter than any before. But you got to get ready. You know what you got to do? Turn up the radiation. Turn on the revelation. You know what? You light up illumination. I want to glow in the dark. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come on. Turn it up. Turn up the radiation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Turn on the revelation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Light up I feel that cool east wind blowing. I feel it blowing. Woo! Do y'all feel that? Do y'all feel that? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I feel it. Woo! I feel it. Ha. Come on now. Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. To fire in my hands, fire in my feet, fire in the church. Fire in the street, fire in my head, fire in my feet, ha! fire in the church, fire in the street, come on! Fire in my hands, fire in my feet, fire in the church, fire in the street, fire in my head, fire in my feet, ha! fire in the church, fire in the street, yeah! Ha! We gotta let it out, yeah! We gotta let it out. Gotta let it out. Oh yeah. We gotta let it out. We gotta, gotta let, let it out. out. Oh. oh yes, we gotta let it out. Gotta let it out. Yeah. Turn up the radiation. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Turn Light up illumination. Yes, Lord. I want to glow in the dark. Hey, hey, hey. Turn up the radiation. Yes, Lord. Turn on the revelation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't you want him to open your eyes, have that encounter with God? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I feel the presence of the Lord heavy in this place today. Amen. We're so glad you decided to join us for Apostles Conference 23. It's been a great blessing. Had some great dynamic ministers, great move of God through this place. And tonight, I believe, will be no different. It'll be in depth the way. The ending of a thing is better than the beginning. Amen. Right now, with a very special presentation, would you please welcome Revival for Christ Club's Winds of Fire flag team. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Winds of fire flag team. You know, I love the flags when they do. I always, it makes me think of the Holy Spirit moving all around you, all around you like I am. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing someday when you stand in glory and stand in heaven and there's 14,000 flaggers? Wouldn't that be amazing? Man, that'd be awesome, man. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Uh, praise the Lord. Anyway, right now at this time, something we've done every night is give our MITs an opportunity to get up and share a little bit of Jesus with you. This young man here, I praise the Lord for him. He's a wonderful young man of God. He loves God with all his heart. He was in the Revival for Christ Club MIT program many years ago, but wasn't able to complete it. Came back just a few years ago with him and his lovely wife right here to Oklahoma. And Mark has since then been in both. He's the only MIT student to be in both classes. He came, when he came back, he said, I need both classes because I'm so far behind. So Mark has been in those classes, been doing a great job. And who knows, he very well could be MIT certified before too long. So right now, please welcome Brother Mark. He's going to come and testify real quick before we change the order of the service. Praise God, who's excited? I don't know about you, but I'm excited. We've had four powerful days, four powerful ministers get up and share what God has put on their heart. Praise God. I don't know how any of us can be sitting down, can you say, praise God. Let's allow that X level to come alive in us like never before, amen? You know, when I was first asked about this opportunity, the first thing that popped into my mind was the story of David and Goliath. When he went to the brook, and he didn't pick up one stone, he didn't pick up two stones, he didn't pick up three, he picked up five smooth stones. We will have the opportunity to hear five ministers, five men of God. Now get this. These appointments, these connections were done divinely. How did David reach down into that brook and grab those stones? He had to have an arm, didn't he? He had to have an arm. That anointed righteous man, Jesus Christ, led these arms together. And then what happened? The Bible says that he puts them in his pouch, right? And then he went and he put, a, and he put the word and the spirit and the operation. And he boom and he knocked down the devil. We've had five. After tonight, it'll be five. The word, the spirit, the power, the authority, and the anointing of God. There is no way we should not reach that X level of Christianity by the end of this tonight. No way. And I want to thank my God in heaven. For allowing me to share that. Last year we had three. Last year it was three. Once again by divine appointment. And the Lord told me, he said, you know why it was three last year, son? I said, no, why? He said, because I was establishing my Godhead. I said, wow, praise God. And this year I'm establishing my word, my spirit, my power, my authority, and my anointing in my people. Praise God. Yeah. Everybody give Brother Mark another hand. We appreciate Mark. I'll tell you, I love Brother Mark, and if you know him around here, Brother Mark is a sweetheart. Everybody loves Brother Mark. He's a good guy, Brother Mark Bud. He, I've never heard Mark say no to nobody. If they want to do something, he's always there, ready to help, and I appreciate that. Right now, without any further hesitation, we want to get ready to change the order of the service, get right into the Word tonight. And before we do that, we're going to invite MIT J.J. Underwood to come and do the bio for our last and final speaker tonight. We save the best for the last, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, coming up in just a few minutes will be Apostle Larry Fisher. Here is J.J. Underwood. Who's ready for service tonight? <laughs> Woo! Apostle Larry Fisher is the founder of Word of Truth Bible Teaching Ministry. And he currently serves as the apostle of the Greater Love Assembly in the Church of Chicago. Whew. He's also the founder of the online uh, Christ, Christ, uh, Cross of Christ uh, Discipleship School. He is also the founder of the Gr Grace Love Academy, which is a homeschool, accredited homeschool, that provides schooling all the way from pre-K to first grade. And he's working on a five-year plan to go all the way to sixth grade as well. Oh, give, your, give him a hand of praise. He also has My Face Faces, which is a Christian no, uh, social network online platform that all of us can use. Our chief apostle and apostle Jenny are actually on that program as well, so it's pretty cool. 
We also had the Christ Family Apostolic Network. Everyone knows about that. See, fam. Woo. It is a Christian broadcasting company. I did not know this, but it is broadcasting to over 90 countries over the world. So isn't that amazing? Amen. Mm. In addition to all these accomplishments, he is also a uh, author of three books, a conference speaker, and a revivalist who preaches the power of the cross with great passion. He has an honorary doctorate degree in humanitarianism and philosophy as well. Oh, man. And this is his goal right here. It is to empower it is to empower the people to live spirit-filled lives and word-based kingdom lives. Oh, Ronda da Sierra da with preaching, teaching, and reaching and healing the sick in Jesus' name. Oh, Ronda da Sierra da and he is a wonderful father to four wonderful children, and he is a husband to Miss Patricia, Patricia right here, and she serves alongside him with ministry. And I want to have a personal testimony real quick to Apostle Larry Fisher. Whenever I heard him speak last time when we were here, I never could imagine how powerful the cross could be inside my life. How powerful the cross could be when you take the cross up, when the cross comes upon you, the Holy Ghost will begin to rain upon you. When you take the word and you take the spirit, truth will come out and you'll be able to exile every single thing. And this man preaches it with conviction. This man preaches it with authority. This man preaches it with honor and integrity because he knows the power of the cross. He knows what it's done for him. Here's a vision and that vision has spread Jesus is Christ's name across the world. And so I want to make you guys raise to your feet and praise the Lord and also welcome up Apostle Larry Fisher as he comes to the stage to tell you about the power of the cross and the roar that comes behind it. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, give God a better praise than that. Come on, give him a better praise than that. Come on, give him a better praise than that. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Truly, he's worthy to be praised. And my God, I'll tell you, I, I, I just can't, I, I'm at a loss for words, and that's very seldom that I don't know what to say, but God is moving so mightily in this, in this, in this uh, uh, conference. Amen. This gathering, and this is divine. I want you to understand that this is not just a, a, a coming together, but this is divine appointment. And, and because God has allowed you to be a part of it, because he's kept breath in your body, and maybe there's some illness, maybe there's some infirmity, but you're yet still moving. Come on, somebody. And you're yet able to praise him and open your mouth and lift him up. Huh? Give him the glory and the, give him the honor that is due his holy name. You are, you are, we are his crown achievement. We are his crown achievement. Design created to worship him and glorify him and to and to be in fellowship with God. Hallelujah. So give him one more praise. Now now give him one more praise. Come on, come on. Now give him one more praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I'm so full right now. Let me tell you something. I, I want you to sit because we're closing out. You've been standing. You've been so, you, you've been such a blessing to the, to the speakers. You've been a blessing to me. Hallelujah. And just to see God move. See, I know something about an event, and especially something like this. This did not come easy. You know, whenever you set out to do something for the Lord, and bless the people of God, and not just the people, but those unbelievers that will see uh, and, and view this, amen, and be moved in their heart, pricked in their hearts, amen, and, and, and want to know Jesus, amen. But there is a fight, there is a battle that ensues, and when you talk about roaring, come on somebody, when you understand the real basics, uh, the, I'm talking about the basics of a roar, we ain't talked about the generality of the roar yet, but they're just the basics of the roar, you and I being able to live 
lift up our voices. I want everybody to know here today that each one of you, because of your roar and because of your desire for God, you are in the crosshairs of the devil. But let me help you. The roar that's on the inside of you, the roar that you're able, come on, to muster up even in the midst of what you might be going through now cancels out the work of the enemy. If you would just open your mouth, uh, there's some stuff right now that's lingering that's been on you for a while, but if you would just open your mouth and tell God, thank you. See, what we don't understand, thanking God is a roar. Because every time you thank God, the, come on, come on, the kingdom of darkness trembles. Every time you give a testimony, it is a roar and, and it sends shockwaves into the, the kingdom of darkness. Now, nobody said this, and I'm surprised out of all of our speakers. Okay, but do you know that a lion's roar can go five miles, can be heard five miles? Come on, did you know that a lion's roar, I'm going to say it again, can be heard five miles away? Now, if, if watch this, if, if, if God made the lion, come on somebody, and the lion's roar can be heard, but then God made you, wait a minute now, and then put himself inside of you. Imagine when you roar, come on somebody, what happens in the kingdom of darkness? What happens when there is infirmity? Come on, somebody. What happens? It's heard. I want you to know your roar is heard. When it seems like your roar ain't being heard, when it seems like things ain't moving the way you think they ought to move, your roar is being heard. God creates you to roar. I said God created you to roar. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Be seated. I I'm not going to be long, I promise you, because it's been a long, t a a lo a long journey. But I I my job, I believe, tonight is just to sum things up. I asked Apostle Timothy, I said, Apostle, would you um, do me a favor and pump some air back into the room? Because these speakers before me, they took all the air out the room. They, they, they suck all of the air, so I'm, I'm, I'm operating on fumes here. Amen, somebody. But God is so good, and I have been so blessed. L let me get these uh, acknowledgments out the way, and I got to give you a personal testimony about my being here and the effect that being here has had on me. I want to I wanna, I wanna thank Apostle, Chief Apostle and Apostle Jenny, this is more than an opportunity. In fact, it's not an opportunity. If, if, it's, if it's labeled an opportunity, that means I'm looking to get something out of it, that there's some strings attached. But when it's an honor, come on, somebody. When it's an honor, you, it means you're humble. And I'm telling you, I am humble to be here again. I'm humble. Apostles, that you have allowed me to have access to the soul that you both work so hard to, to, to train and to, and, and, and to motivate, amen, and to be a blessing to. So this is really an honor. I can't, I can't remember, and, and I've been a lot of places, and, and I'm not taking anything away from anybody or any ministry, but, but what you receive when you come here. The, the, the level of hospitality, the level of, 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 come on, somebody. How can you be here and not be blessed? That's all I can say. How can you be here and not be blessed? That lets you know that God is in it. Amen. I'm telling you, this is one of the most blessed pieces of real estate. Amen. I'm, and I'm talking about the place, but I'm talking about the people that inhabit it. Amen. Are you hearing me? In, 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 in all of the places I've ever been. Amen. And it's better than it was yes, last, last year. It keeps on getting better. Amen. Because the man and the woman of God, who God has ordained to oversee this 
amazing assignment in the earth. Amen? Amen. My God, I just, I esteem you. I esteem you. Amen. So thank you for the honor. Amen. Also, um, the, 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 the apostles that came before me, the richness of the word. Amen. See, one thing I always tell people, when you get to the place where you become unteachable, you in trouble. Amen. And, and so, so when, when you are teachable, you come with your heart open. You come with your mind open. Amen. And when you trust where you are and the people that you're around, you are able to receive. And I have received. My God. Apostle Toby, my God. Yo, the way God uses you, you are, a, you are your, unique in the kingdom. I mean, and, and that just did, that didn't come overnight. That came as a result of a relationship where you allow God to use you. Amen. As he sees fit. And you have blessed me and my wife at points and levels you don't even know. Amen. And I'm looking forward to future blessings from you. Amen. Apostle Jenny. How, you, you all got, I call them the revelators. The revelation that comes out of you. Oh, my God. I just hope RFC knows what you got. I, just, I know you're blessed, but I just hope you really know what you got. Amen? Because I'm telling you, it's so hard to even describe. I, I'm like on the edge of my seat waiting to hear what, you, what, what God said to you next. And the way you, 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 just, you, you just flow through the scriptures. And revelation pours out. Amen? And revelation is what we're after. It's what we want. Amen? Because that's what builds the church. The church is built on revelation of God's truth. Amen. And so you, you bring that to us. You bring that to, to, to us when you speak. Amen. And so we thank you. We thank you so much. I thank you for the relationship. Uh, I was sitting there thinking before I got up here and I said, you know what? I was thinking about you. And I said, my little Elijah, he loves you. He loves you. Do you know what that does for us? I mean, that, that's God at work. And see, we don't know now, but we don't know the effect that his relationship with you will have on him spiritually. Because we don't know the whole picture yet. But God is doing something. And I'm telling you, it is a blessing. And we trust you. We trust you. And so I thank you for that. I thank you for being who you are. In fact, and I thank God for your testimony of healing of healing you. I didn't know that, but God is so good. Um, well, we know Apostle Irvin. See, so let me tell you something about Apostle Irvin. Y'all didn't know what y'all was getting. I did. I was just sitting back there waiting, saying, yeah, wait, wait till they get this. They ain't ready for this. And, and the way God connected us uh, connected uh, Apostle Irving uh, with, with Apostle uh, uh, Timothy. Uh, you saw, I think you saw him on C-Fan. Amen. You see, the, you see the benefits of us getting the word out? Amen. And, and, and he saw him, and that was a connection. Before I could get them together, God had them together in another location. Amen. But it was God. Amen. And, uh, and Apostle and uh, uh, Irving and his wife, we've known them. Uh, I was actually, uh, I, I asked God to send somebody in my life in Chicago because I was new to Chicago with the ministry. And I needed somebody in Chicago that I could, you know, look to. And he, his name kept coming back to me. And they were telling me he's a man of honor. He's a man of integrity. You want to meet him. And one of his, one of the apostles that's under him 
set it up so I could meet him at a breakfast. And since that day, it's, it's been on. And we've, we've done ministry together on multiple occasions. We preached at both churches and all of that. And it was an honor for me to armor bear for him uh, last night because that's what I, I, I think that is, as servants, that's what we do. We honor the anointing that is on people. And so I was just blessed to, to, to carry his, his, his equipment and make sure he was okay. Amen. And so we thank God for him and Pastor Brenda, who is also a great woman of God, a great preacher. Amen. We thank God for, for, for them and their ministry. Amen. And then um, Chief Apostle, you never know what you're going to get, but you know you're going to get something. And you know it's going to be good. And wait a minute now. And you know it's, just, it's something that he don't just drop a message and then, you, and then you forget what it is. He plants seeds. The word, seed, but he plants the word, the seed, and he gives you a way of understanding and the revelation. Come on, somebody. X level? Oh, I'm going to work that. Oh, he, I'm going to work that. X level, I'm going to work that. You, 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 you never cease to amaze me with what God gives you. And I love the fact, let me, I'm going I'm to hurry up. I love the fact of the enthusiasm of apostle, chief apostle. How you do this for 50 years and still keep building steam? I mean, some, come on, most things you do for 20 years, you start slowing down. I don't see no slowdown in him. Amen, somebody. He just, it just gets, and it says, I've known him. And see, y'all don't understand, we get the files. We get the preaching every week. Every Sunday, we get a new file. Amen? So we get him, and it's playing in the studio. It never turns off. So we get to hear it. And I get to witness it, and I get blessed by it. But we thank, and I thank God for your, your tenacity, your resilience. Because can I just throw this in there? The Amalekites. What they tried to do was ambush. Read the Bible. They tried, they lied in wait. To ambush. Y'all ain't trying to help me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I just want you to know I know where y'all at. I just want you to know that I'm with you. I'm connected to this. Are oh, you hearing me? So I know. See, some people don't know what the t-shirts mean, but I know. Amen, somebody. That's the resiliency, but that is the hand of God. That is the hand of God. He will fight your battles. Come on, somebody. He will fight your battles. And you know you're in a real church when, when the church let God fight, when the church let God fight their battle. You ain't got to throw off. You Come on, somebody. You ain't got to do like the world do. Come on, somebody. In fact, my Bible says pray for them that speak evil concerning you. Pray for them. That's where your blessing is. Can I help you? When you pray for people that don't do you right, that's a roar. That's a roar. Are you hearing me? All right. Well, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm done with that. Y'all sit down. I got a few more things I got to say here. Sister Audra, she operates in excellence. Where she at? Even when she presents you with the basket. It, not just the basket, but pre the presentation. Thank you. We, 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 we feel the love in it. Opening it up, we feel the love. We see the time that it took to do that with excellence, a spirit of excellence. Are you hearing me? Ryan, I don't know how you do it, son. But Ryan has been such a gracious assistant, a servant, 
and he's funny. He, do you know he, he could speak all kinds of dialects? Y'all know that already, right? Oh, yeah, we had Elvis in the car. We, come on, who else, who else we had in the car with us? He, he, was, he was giving us the rundown of, of, of different dialects and people, and people speak, but he is such a, 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 you're such a, a blessing to be in the company of. Amen? He took me uh, to, the, to the mall, and um, in fact, let me tell you the, the blessing. I told him that I wanted a pair of pants that he had, um, golf pants. And I saw him, and I've been looking for those pants, and I couldn't get them, and he had them on. And I mentioned it to him. He said, well, I got these at, at Kohl's. I said, okay, wow. He says, I'll take you to get some. He didn't take me just to get some. He went the day before to see if they had them in stock. Do you know the impression that that made in my spirit and even my wife? He went the day before to make sure. Come on, y'all. See, that may be little to you, but that's not little to me. Because I know how people can be. I'm talking about Christians, professing Christians. I, I know they say one thing, but, but you know what? They do something else. But this is something that he didn't have to do. It's honor. It's honor, and we honor you and thank you. I want to thank God for every hug, and I've gotten plenty since I've been here. My wife has gotten plenty. One young lady came up and said, I didn't get to hug you yesterday. <laughs> Just a little while. I didn't get to hug you yesterday, so can I hug you now? My God, those hugs are anointed. What can I say about the meals? Y'all are blessed. You all are blessed. I thank God for, for, the, for the time and, and the love that goes into every meal that we, have, that we have been blessed by here. Amen? Come on. Give God some praise for, for, for his servant. I want to congratulate RFC, Flame Christian Network. Come on now. <laughs> See, what it's about is about taking the gospel around the world. Come on. This ain't about competition. See, what we get ready to do, we get ready to crisscross. And we're going to, come on, we're going we gonna to take even more territory, but we're going to take it together. And when we crisscross, come on, somebody, it's going to be a roar. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't trying to help me. Everything is about to roar. Are you hearing me? So God is good. God is good. Come on, sit down. He's giving me an inroad with an SEO company that I'm going to introduce you all to that I'm planning on connecting with that's going to take what we're doing to the, to, -uh, to the X level. Okay? Are you hearing me? Do you have a, a logo for that yet? Okay, I'm glad. I'm thankful. Yeah, good. Okay, you, can, yeah, for X, you need a logo for X level. And you need, you, come on, and you need to copyright it. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah, because it's going to be something. Amen? But I thank God for them. And let me say this while I'm talking about that. You all, and I've said this before, when it comes to media, when it comes to editing, I don't, I've met a lot of people, but Frank and Tasha? You know the blessing, the, the other blessing though? I'm connected with them. Amen. So I'm going I'm to commission them. Amen. Because we're going to, come on, we're going we, we, we to do some new things together. Amen. Um, real quick, uh, we want to we congratulate, they're not here, Vernon Bush Tabernacle. Amen. And we want to congratulate RFC as well. Amen. For their connection. Amen. And I um, also want to thank uh, Way to Love back home. 
for holding it down while we're here. And, uh, oh, and uh, uh, um, my faith spaces. Now, now watch this. You guys have kept it going. I need you to know that. You all have kept it going. I did it five years ago, and I couldn't get any participation, no traction. You guys have kept it going. And right now, we're getting ready to do something new with the same SEO company that we're working with that's going to help us to drive more people to it so that we can expand it. However, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, um, we're going to honor uh, Chief Apostles 50 years, and I talked to him about it, of ministry. We're going to commemorate our one full year, complete year, with uh, with his logo, the 50-year logo, amen, because you are, you stay, you, you, you stay, you keep it going. You're out there when I'm not out there. Are you hearing me? So I think it's only fitting that we honor you uh, and, 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 and we recognize you uh, for that, amen. And I think I, I, I've said it all um, that I'm going to say. And um, that's, that's half my message, y'all, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, my mess, this is part of my message. Um, but I don't go anywhere. I don't go anywhere without acknowledging that lady right there. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Y'all know the test. I don't know if y'all know the testimony, but three years ago, just before COVID, the enemy attacked her, and she didn't even know who she was. Okay, her her thyroid, and the thyroid is the central central control system, uh, center for your body, really. And honestly, and the only way I can describe it, she looked like somebody that was on crack down to probably 130 pounds, um, paranoid. I, I would come home, I'm just gonna share this because see, I'm gonna roar right now. I would come home and, and, and my closet would be torn to pieces. She wouldn't sleep at night. I mean, it was, and, and let me tell you what was happening, Brother Chris, Pastor Chris, the enemy was trying to rob me of my roar. Let me help you. Let me, let, me, let me show you because I love, I love transparency. There's a times when I, I, I struggled because I didn't understand why God would mess with her. Because this is the sweetest woman I've ever, a person that I've ever known. And she loves everybody and everybody loves her. And she's like you, Apostle Jenny. She's quiet. But don't let her start praying. <laughs> oh, no, don't let her start praying. It's over. We prayed just before when we were leaving for, for the hotel room. She prayed for me for tonight. But God has blessed her. And she has been, she's been there for me. Amen. And, and let me share this with you. Sit down. When, 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 when God was bringing her out, of what she was going through and, and during that time, and this is the transparency, and this is where I started getting a little weak. During that time of taking care of her, I was diagnosed with cancer. But I, 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 I made the choice to take care of her through what she was going through, and I put off the treatment because the treatment, they said, was necessary. Are you hearing me? And God saw us through it. He brought her through. And when he brought her through at near her coming to 100%, then she started taking care of me. Are you hearing me? And she saw me through my treatment. And I'm telling you, she was out of church for over three years. I was going to church every, every Sunday by myself. I had to leave my kids home to watch, to take care of her so I could go preach and then run back home. Oh, the enemy was trying to steal me and rob me of my roar. Amen. But I'm telling you, when you rooted in the cross, 
when, when you understand and know the, 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 the power of the cross, amen, somebody? I tell people all the time, the cross is the answer to every ill you will ever suffer, whether it be physical, whether it be, whether it be psychological, whatever it is, the cross is the answer for us. Are you hearing me? So I thank God that he kept me in, because the devil was telling me she ain't coming back. She, she, she done. You might as well start looking. Oh, you, don't, you don't think the devil would tempt you like that? He comes to compound your situation. See, he, he wanted me to start looking at other women in the church. I'm just telling the truth. But I did not do it. I, no, I can tell you here, and listen, God knows my heart. Amen? I did not do it because my love for God first and my love for her. Are you hearing me? So I praise and thank God for my lovely wife. Amen. I'm done. I'm done. Now, did I get this right? Righteous overcoming anointing roar? Revelation, I'm sorry. Righteous overcoming anointed revelation. That's what this conference has been about. That'll, listen to me. That's what this conference and this gathering has been all about. And I want to share with you a few uh, uh, things that the Holy Spirit put in my, in my spirit. I did not, I don't have a, a foundation scripture. God didn't give it to me like that. Uh, uh, after all that they did this before me, I did have to go back to the hotel and, 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 and rewrite everything. But, I, but God told me to fast yesterday. So I fasted up. All day today, and I'm, I can't wait till this is over. So this might be quick. I'm just being honest now. But the scripture, as I was sitting there, and um, the scripture that came to me was two scriptures. The scripture that came to me uh, 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 was Second Timothy, uh, I believe it's two and four, and he said, "The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they will heap unto themselves teachers." having itching ears. Amen? And they will turn from the truth. See, when you turn from the truth, you, you don't have a roar. Amen? When you turn from the truth, you, you can't speak the things of God. Amen? Bible says that they that worship him must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. And your worship is directly connected to your roar. And so what comes out of your mouth, if it doesn't contain the truth of God's word, the revelation of God, amen, then there is no roar. But the Bible says that they will turn to fables. Amen. And I, and, and I looked it up somewhere maybe 20, 30 years ago, but when I looked it up, there was an illustration of the heaping. And if you can imagine, uh, uh, um, 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 you're in the Midwest, so some of y'all know about barns and hay and, and, and pitchforks and, and pitching hay. That's, what, that's how people go through teachers. Come on, somebody. They just throw them over the shoulder. If they're not saying what they want them to hear, they just keep on heaping until they find one. So they go from church to church, from, uh, from, from personality to personality. Amen. If it's not what they want to hear, come on, somebody. Then, then they keep on moving until they come on, somebody. Because so many people in the body of Christ, they can't take raw truth. They can't take the truth. And when I see that, many times what I have to begin to discern, I ask God to help me to discern, are they really saved or not? Because there ought to come a point in, in your walk with God that you desire the truth. The truth is all that you want. In fact, I, I relate that to being in pursuit of God. When you're in pursuit of God, you can maintain your roar. What the enemy tries to do is the enemy tries to pull you off your course. Amen. But when you are truly in pursuit of God, you're in pursuit of knowledge, you're in pursuit of revelation, and you're in pursuit of the very nature of who God is because it becomes that important to you that you understand and know who you are investing in and what you're believing in. Come on, somebody. And let me tell you something. When you invest in the right thing, 
Come on, somebody, which is the word of God. It has the ability, come on, somebody, to build you up. Amen. And your most holy faith. And that's what we need in order to maintain our roar. I'm going somewhere. So one of the things uh, uh, that the Lord was dealing with me about, he said we're living in a, in a world where injustice, oppression, immorality, it seems to be on the rise. Amen, somebody. I, I don't know if you've looked at, if, if, if I, I, I forgot something. I got to interrupt here. I, I forgot something. I got I to gotta mention this. Hold the thought that I just gave you. RFC, no, this ties right in with what I'm talking about. RFC co-op? Homeschool? See, I know this church. I'm lined up with this church. No, no, no. Let me help you. My wife and I took our son, Elijah, out of public school. Because the stuff that they're teaching our children now, they're taking away the rights of the parents to determine what the children can learn. And the church has lost its roar because it won't stand up and say anything. And your roar is not just words, but your roar is your actions. Come on, somebody. With your lips, you worship me. But your heart, your heart determines what you will do for God. Your heart determines what you're willing to sacrifice for God. So let me tell you, and see, and I applaud you. Come on, give it to me again. And whoever is helping you, I applaud you. You know why? When we took our son out of school, we turned our house into a school. We don't have a living room. We have a school now. We were willing to sacrifice that. So the children, we have to protect the children. So we opened up a school, Grace Learning Academy, in our house, and we, and we and listen, and, and, and we homeschool Elijah and those other kids that come. We had 12 kids this summer. Are you hearing me? In our home. Can I help y'all? And I'm not saying y'all have to follow this model. But we didn't ask for a dime. And I'm saying you don't have to follow that model because thing, it takes finances to, to do things. But God said, this is what you do. Are you hearing me? Do you know that the roar of that decision and the actions that connected to it, do you know the, the, the quaking that took place in, in, in hell? Yeah. Do you understand what happened? Do you know you, we dealt the devil a black eye? Amen? Because that's what this is all about. And we're not understanding. Sit down, please. We're not understanding uh, uh, so many things. And I want to share a few things with you that the Lord had to enlighten me on concerning how to understand what is going on the times that we're in. It is as if the voice of the ungodly is drowning out the voice of the righteous. And when I say that, I, I say that metaphorically, but what I'm saying to you, it seems like the world has a large, a louder voice as it pertains to the things that take place in our world. And when I say our world, I'm talking about the things that make its way to our, our community, the things that make its way to our doorstep, and in some cases, the things that has made its way into the, into the households of believers who don't have it in them to say what needs to be said. And that's why this conference is so important because what I hope will happen tonight in summation, in the summation is that there will be a, 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 a righteous indignation that will well up in you that what you might have been afraid or hesitant to say or hesitant to confront that after tonight, after this weekend, you will take, you, you, will, you will be both feet in and you will say what needs to be said in order to bring correction to the things that is taking and making the church look weak. 
See, there was a time that the, the world would look at the church and look to the church for, for, for answers. The, the world doesn't look at the church no more. I'm talking about Christ deniers still looking at the church because the church at one point was, was, was the example. And we, listen, and we were making some progress. But can I help you? I, I do, a, I, I do a, a, a workshop called Free to Share Your Faith. And I invite churches to send their members in. And I teach them on how to witness, how to evangelize. And I show them the methods and all the things that's in, that we use. And when I, when I started that just before COVID, the average church size was 200. The average church size in the United States was 200 members. Guess what the average church size is now? It is only 34 people. That is the average church size in the United States, 34 people. But let me help you. If you got 34 people, you're doing good. Amen. If you got 34 people, hey amen, that you can impart in them and teach them and develop in them the raw, because Jesus only used 12. And Jesus, come on, somebody. And when they stood up on the day of Pentecost and Peter preached under the power of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, and the other 11 standing with him. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about 12 roaring. The gospel truth. Are you hearing me? This is what it looks like in the body of Christ now that we don't have a say. Are you understanding this? If you look at social media, that's the problem. We do too much looking at social media. And social media, because we are not strategic and, and, and we don't utilize it in the, in the manner it should be used in, only for the furtherance of the gospel. If I don't, listen, you're not going to see me in there on, on social media telling you what I ate. I'm not on social media posing. No, 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 because I got family members on the way to hell. And I ain't got time, come on somebody, to, to do that type of thing. I need my son saved, I need my daughter saved, and I need a strategy, I need an anointing, I need a roar to command the devil to take his hands off. Are you hearing me? Sit down, sit down. Do you understand? I'm going somewhere. Just, just give me a minute. Hallelujah. Oh, God. The truth is, we serve a God who is all-powerful. And he's a God that is just. The righteous have a mighty roar, watch this, that is able to penetrate and to pierce the kingdom of darkness. What we fail to understand, the power of our roar. In other words, we don't, we don't understand that we've been given authority. Amen. To speak as he speaks. How do I know? Because my Bible tells me that I am a co-laborer with God. And see, at some point, if you want to, to, your roar to, to, to go to, uh, to the X level, come on, somebody, you got to get to the point where what burdens God's heart ought to burden your heart. Let me tell you something. When what burdens God's heart burdens your heart, you become fearless. I said you become fearless. Are you hearing me? That's what the enemy has done. He, he's, he struck a chord of fear in so many people who profess God. But the Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. And I, when, I, when I hear that scripture and I, I look at their life, and I'm not putting myself higher than anybody, but you can really surmise to some good degree. Where people, a person is in their walk with God based on how they live. You know who has a roar and who doesn't. You know who you can get to come to church. 
I'm talking about this. You know who you can get to come to Bible study. You know who you can get to come to the prayer meeting. When you have to pull on people to come to church, come on somebody, and pull on them to come to Bible study, and pull on them to come to the prayer meeting. Listen to me. They ain't got no roar. They've been stripped of their roar. Come on, somebody. They had a roar, but they lost it. Are you hearing me? I'm going somewhere. Christianity. So let me tell you what God showed me. What we have to be able to do is to learn how to discern on different levels. Some things God will show you, but he'll show you, he'll give you a natural, a natural example so that you can make a spiritual assertion. In other words, he'll show you things in the natural. And because we have, we have, we have this built-in spiritual understanding, the Holy Spirit, amen, will begin the process for us, what we see in the natural, how it is causing havoc in the spiritual when it comes to people, people that we serve with. Are you hearing me? People with titles, people who have professed accomplishments. But when God gives you discernment about their behaviors, he's giving you something to work with. But what you have to now do is you have to take your eyes off of them and you have to ask yourself this, why? Why is it this way? Because if we never deal with the why, they will stay the way they are. And we will see them as they are. Are you hearing me? And so what happened and what God began to show me, he's saying this attack on the church, and that's what it is. It's an attack on the church. See, the church has always been under attack, but now the time that we're living in now, 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 now the, the, the things are so much worse. And so what God showed me, he's saying what we've lost is we've lost our understanding of what Christian theology is all about. And you need some level, come on somebody, and I know you get it at this church. If you sit on the apostle, chief apostle, and apostle, you, you get theology. You, get, you understand the basics. But what scares me and what alarms me is the amount of people that are professing to know God that don't have no understanding of what they believe in because they've not properly been taught. They don't have the understanding. And Christian theology is the study of beliefs and practices and teachings of Christian religion. We get people in the church, and because we just want membership, and because we want to we, we, we want to line uh, the offering baskets, we, we, we give, come on somebody, we give them a subpar, amen, y'all ain't trying to, a subpar covering, a subpar teaching, and we expect them to live it out. But no, we ain't expecting them to live it out if that's what we're giving them. It means that we have an agenda that does not align itself with the word of God. And when it does not align itself with the word of God, you should never expect them to have a roar. Can I help you? There are some people you don't want to pray for you. Come on, there's some people that don't have a roar on the inside. There's some people that the enemy turns his nose up at them when they're praying because he knows they don't have a roar. Because their life is not aligned with the will and the purpose in which they've been intended for. And when you come into a relationship with God, you enter into a journey where your life now has meaning and God has a purpose and a plan for you. He told you that. He said, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you concerning you, but they're all good and none evil to bring you what? God has a plan for your end. And the fact that you know that God has a plan for your end, and because he's a God that, listen, he's a God that, that lives, he lives in the future. 
Are you hearing me? He, he's the God of eternal past. He's the God of eternal present. He's the God of eternal future. And so because he has a plan, he already knows exactly what he has determined for you. And that ought to create a roar in you when you know where he brought you from. Well, let me help you. Let me stop you right there. But if you ain't preaching on sin, y'all ain't trying to help me. You know, we got a lot of churches now. They don't preach on sin. You know, you can come to church and, and you can do per pretty much anything you want to do. Amen. A a and we'll step over your sin. Come on, somebody. And we'll let you do this in the church. And we'll let you do that in the church. And we have no desire for your soul salvation. Are you hearing me? We need to get a roar back in the pulpits. Can I just throw this in there? Who roars more than apostle? Chief, listen, if you, I've studied the man. The man roars. Before he came up with roar, God gave him roar, he was roaring. Are you hearing? It just comes out of him that way. Hallelujah. Christian theology, it involves exploring things such as the nature of God. You, you need to know something about God in order to, 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 to associate, to associate. You, you need to know his nature. Why? Because, watch this, because when you are born again, his spirit comes to live in you, meaning that you receive his nature. Come on, somebody. That's what makes you victorious, that you have the Spirit of God living down on the inside of you. The problem is we have not taken the time out to unpack what we have received in God's Spirit coming to live on the inside of you. Because let me help you. There's more to you than you know. Whenever the Spirit of God is living on the inside of you, there's levels, there's places, there's things about you that you have not experienced yet that you're called to know. You are to grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are to grow in the knowledge, in the grace. You are to come to know the nature of God that is living on the inside of you. That is what furnishes you and that's what gives you the ability to be able to live out this life according to that which God has created you for. And if you're going to accomplish and you're going to do the things that God has put you in this earth for, you're going to have to have a roar. Because there's some battles you, you are not going to win. Come on, you can't be timid when the devil comes. you got to have a roar on the inside. And that roar is based on your knowledge of the nature of who God is, a nature of his word. Come on, somebody. you got to know what God has said about you. you got to know who God has made you and who he's making you, what you're becoming in him. Are you hearing me? I'm going somewhere. We have to know and explore the role of Jesus. What are you saying? The meaning of salvation. What are you saying? I'm saying that there's too many churches right now, they never preach Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. There, there's churches out here that you can come in and, and they'll be playing your favorite R&B. On their way to worship. Y'all ain't trying to help me. How do you preach over top of that? The devil is a liar. We don't preach on sin. We don't preach on the meaning of salvation. The last time I checked, my Bible told me I needed to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. Are you hearing me? We need to understand the purpose of human life. A lot of people right now don't understand why they're even on the earth. Do you know who's responsible for that? For telling them? We are. We are supposed to be the example. We are supposed to be the example, not just in our physical, but we're supposed to be the, uh, the example in the word. Amen. We ought to be epistles. Come on, somebody. We ought to become epistles written by men. They ought to see us, apostle. They ought to see us and want to know Jesus. 
if we never get to speak to them, they ought to see how we live, and, and it calls them to want to know Jesus. Do you understand? Do you understand your walk is a roar? Trying to help me? Do you understand your behavior, your living? Do you understand your habits are a roar? Are you hearing me? They're silent roars. It's what people see. Amen. Because when they look at you, they see the God that's in you. And it speaks to them. And it speaks to them. The Bible says, no man cometh to the Father except the, the Spirit of the Lord first draw him. You know, God is drawing people through your walk. God is opening up people to see and to inquire as to who he is by how you live. Are you hearing me? And let me help you. A roar doesn't have to be loud. A roar can be a whisper. Come on, somebody. But even if it's a whisper coming from a child of God, it still travels. It still sends shock, shock waves into the kingdom of darkness. Even if it's a whisper. Come on, somebody. Let me get you this. Christian theology is the examination of biblical texts, church history, that helps develop a comprehensive understanding of Christian beliefs and values. One of the reasons that we don't have the roar in the body of Christ that we need, again, is because people don't even understand and don't know what they signed up for. That tells me that they're not really saved. Jesus said, they that Believe. Believing means there's some knowing, there's some knowledge that you have received something from God, amen, that is given you to know who God is. Then you are saved. We get people saved that without preaching the cross to them. How do you do that? How do you lead somebody to Christ that you, that you don't preach Jesus? and him crucified. How do you do that? You can't. You need the gospel. I, I, got a great, I got great testimonies, but my testimonies don't get nobody saved. But my testimonies open them up to want to know more. And when my test, that's why testimony is so powerful. When, when they open up because of the testimony, then you give them the subtle roar. You begin to tell them with love about the Jesus that saved you, delivered you, bled and died for you. Come on, somebody. The Jesus that, come on, somebody. The Jesus that died on an old rugged cross. Come on, for you, honey. He loves you. That's a roar. Are you hearing me? Theology commu communicates and shapes our our, our, our religious practices, and we have some, our ethnical considerations, and then this is the one that really jumps out at me, and how we view and process social issues. So many people have lost their roar because they have given in to the social climate, and one of the things that disturbs me the most is people who will buy into a concept that they have not researched. And guess what? We got that happening in the church right now. But then at the same time, Chief Apostle, we got some folk in the body of Christ that, 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 that mount pulpits every Sunday, watch this, who know better. But they're leading the flock astray. Come on, somebody. Come on. Whatever is, is good to line their pockets, whatever is good, amen, to help them to maintain their, 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 their quality of life, amen, whatever it takes, they know better. And that's what's happening. Did anybody see the Grammys or clips? Of, I hope you didn't see them, but did you see clips of the Grammys? Did you see, okay, you, you, you need, listen, just for educational purposes, you need to go back and look at some of the clips of the Grammys, and you need to see these so-called Christians who have big names, amen, who are renowned, who are in the Grammys, and they were, come on, somebody, y'all, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. We, we've downplayed the gospel, and the problem with it is that there's too many in leadership 
too many apostles, too many prophets. Come on, somebody. Too many pastors and too many teachers that won't lift up their voice and roar and say that's a lie, that's sin. If you do it, you're going to hell. Come on, somebody. You need somebody that's going to stand flat-footed and tell you the truth about your situation. The devil is a lie. There is no such thing as free grace. You can't live how you want to and still make it in. Come on, somebody. Without holiness, no man shall see God. I like what Chief Apostle said. He said, I believe he said the journey, that the holiness is the journey. Are you hearing me? Be ye holy. That's what gives you your roar. That, that's what gives you your roar. And see, what I like about your roar, let me you, sit down. You know what I like about the roar? I like about the roar that, that, that just because things might not be going the way I want them to go, it doesn't affect my roar. In fact, some of my greatest victories have been when I've been going through. Some of my greatest victories is when all hell was breaking loose. But I kept my roar. Y'all trying to help me. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Because some of y'all got testimonies that you haven't told folk that God kept you. But you need to release it. You need to release it. Hallelujah. Let me hurry up here. So Christian theology, I'm just giving you some things that I, I researched. Christian, Christian uh, uh, theology is the ongoing process. Watch this. And I, and I know uh, our chief apostle is going to work with me on this one because I know this is how he gets his information. But it's the process of intellectual because he's a smart man. But it's, it's an intellectual inquiry into who God is. It, it starts intellectually. Come on, somebody. But then the spirit of God that's on the inside of you is, is what collects and, and, and gives you the information. It's the spirit of God on the inside of you that uh, 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 gives you the ability to discern what you're, what, what you're taking in. Come on, somebody. And, and what to leave out. Come on, somebody. And then that's how you get built up. But, but Christian theology is important because what it does, I'm, I'm inquiring of God. And what that says to me is that when I intellectually, when I inquire into who God is, what it says to me, it says I'm in pursuit of him. Y'all ain't trying to help me. You know, I got to share this. I, 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 we have a school called Cross Life School, and we have classes every Saturday. So from the hotel room yesterday, I taught the class. And I told the class, watch this. We connected, brother. Watch this. I told the class, we, we, we come short. My wife is my witness. We, we, we stop at the cross. An apostle said the same thing. We, we stop at the cross. Come on, somebody. And we talked about that Jesus that's on that cross that people wear around their neck. Oh, did I get in trouble with that? Come on, somebody. See, no, no, no. See, that ain't, that ain't Christianity. Come on, somebody. That's stopping short of what has been made available to you through the almighty God, amen, which is God's master plan for man that we, watch this, that we will be one with him. What does that mean to me? It means that if I talk, it's as if though he's talking. That's where you get your roar from. When you speak, it's as if though he's speaking. Didn't the Bible tell us that we are ambassadors for Christ's sake? Come on, somebody. When you're an ambassador, you got all of the privileges of speaking exactly what the one that sent you speaks. And I don't know about you, but I'm a, I'm a sent saint. Come on, somebody. I'm an apostolic saint. I, I've been sent by God, and the only thing I'm able to speak and the only thing I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak only what God would speak. That's where my roar comes from. Amen, somebody. Sit down, sit down. I'm almost done. So it's the ongoing process, intellectual inquiry into God as to how he has revealed himself to us through his word and through his son, Jesus. The simple of it, and this is my little notes, the simple of it is how God reveals himself and allows us to enter into relationship with him through his son. 
Jesus said it this way. Jesus said, John 14 and 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me. What does that mean? What does it mean to have fear? A roar, I'm sorry, of righteousness. I'm going to tell you what it means. And if nobody else is demonstrating this in the world, the church ought to. It means standing up for what is right, regardless of the consequences. Oh, you need a roar then. You need a roar. Because the devil doesn't sit back and let you do what you want to do as a child of God. Amen, somebody. Can I help you? He can't kill our kids, but he's trying to do things to cause them, amen, to do things to themselves. Are you hearing me? And you need a roar to cover your chin. You need a roar to cover your marriage. You need, come on, somebody. You need a roar to cover everything com comprised of your household. You need a roar to hold your mind together. You need a roar. You got to stand up for what is right. Regardless of the consequences, it means speaking out against injustice. Even when it's uncomfortable, when it's unpopular, it means fighting for the oppressed. We're not fighting in many churches for the oppressed because we're keeping the people in the church oppressed. Let, let me tell you something, and, and, and I hope, I, well, I don't care. No, I don't. I don't, because I, I got to tell the truth regardless of the consequences. So, but we, we have renowned churches that, that, that come on the airwaves every, 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 every week and every day, and they have the large budgets, and they're able to, to, to spread their propaganda um, more than a, a lot of us smaller churches. But what they're doing, and I need you to help, I need you to hear me, what they're doing is they're causing the congregation to feel like victims. And, and, and that's a means to keep getting into their pockets. So as long as I can make you a victim, you ain't got no roar. What victim roars? What, what, what person, come on somebody, what person who feels like they need the blessings of a man has a roar? No, only those that belong to the Lord and know who they belong to. I'm not a victim. I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. When you're a conqueror, you can roar. Come on. When you know where he brought you from, you can roar. Come on, somebody. When you, come on, watch this. When you know he's taken you, you got, you got to roar. When you know who he's coming back for you, you got to roar. Are you hearing me? We got to stop making merchandise of the people. Come on, somebody. The Bible said that they make merchandise of the people with empty, empty words, vain, vanity, empty words, words that have no substance, words that does not help, words that does not that help their soul. Do you understand? I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. The roar of the righteous is not timid. It is a bold declaration. That we will not, we will not allow ourselves to be silenced. Can I help you? That's one of your biggest battles. Is the enemy is trying to shut your mouth. And, and let me help you and tell you why I didn't, I didn't get a whole lot of amens. Because a lot of folk ain't aware of the devil's devices. Come on, somebody. We think, we think that when the devil comes, he's going to come in, in the wide open. Amen. And, 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 but it doesn't work that way. He, the, enemy, the enemy is so crafty. Amen. That, that, that through people, he will cause you to think. That, 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 that your existence is nothing. I'm going somewhere. Can I help you? There is a lot of situations, a lot of people in the body of Christ who are struggling mentally. 
And I'm not talking about they have mental disabilities. I'm talking about what has been planted and seeded in their thinking has caused them, watch this, to not be able to even process what the word of God says. And this thing is methodical. It is not a mistake. This thing is planned. This thing, come on, somebody. This, this, this thing is worked, and come on, to, as a, like a science. And it's in our churches. And it prevails over many. Are you hearing me? One of the things that has really been bothering my heart, and I said I was going to give you a little testimony of myself. When, when, I was, when, when I was coming here, and, and, I, and I asked God, I said, God, don't let me leave here and I not be changed. I, I don't, let, don't let me leave here and some aspect of my walk with you is not changed. I, I, I want to I change. And, 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 and in the hotel room, I was thinking how, how much I loved God 20 years ago. And I loved him. And, and I was thinking about how I loved God uh, 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 10 years ago, and I loved him. How much I loved God five years ago, and I loved him. But you know something? I, I, I'm not through. I want to love him. I, I want to love him even more. And I said, God, don't let me leave here without loving you more. Come on, somebody, because I understand the more I love him, the more I love him, the more I'm willing to roar. The, the more I love him, the more I'm willing to sacrifice. The more I love him, the more I can see and understand and know his nature. Because, and, and I need to know his nature because his nature is dwelling on the inside of me. And what I realize, if I love myself, come on, somebody, I will put up a roar, I will put up a fight, amen, because I love myself and I only love myself because he loved me first. I'm trying to equate to the love that he has for me. And you might think that that's wild, but listen, we ought to be striving and we ought to be in pursuit of loving the God, loving God the way he loves us. We will never achieve it, but it ought to be our goal. Because when you get to the place where you say, you know what, God, for, for, for God I live and for God I die, that means you're willing to lift up your voice. Come on, somebody. And you will lift up your voice against everything that is contrary to the will and the purpose of God in his church, in the world, in your family. Come on, somebody. It means there's a transformation that is taking place in you that you're taking your focus off of the things that are wrong and, and, and questioning them and, and critiquing them. But you watch this. But when you roar, it has to be from a place of love and humility. That's the most effective roar that you can ever have. It has to be a roar that is based on love and humility for God. And when it's, watch this, when it's love and humility, then it means that God is in it with you. Are you hearing me? I just want to love him more. I understand that to be sustained and to keep on this journey and to keep growing in the things of God, that my love for him has to grow. And when it grows, come on, somebody, when it grows, then I'm able to stand and I'm able to declare what God is saying. Are you hearing me? Paul said something like that. Paul said to Timothy, he said, Timothy, preach the word. He said, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's where you want to be. It doesn't matter whether you're up here or up there, down there, but you have to be willing, come on somebody, that even in inconvenience, even when it costs you something, you got to be willing to lift your voice and to reprove, come on somebody, and rebuke everything that is not of God. You got to come against it. That's your roar. That's your roar. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I don't know if this is what y'all wanted to hear, but I'm going I'm to stay with it because it's blessing me. The most important note, and I shared this a minute ago, is that the raw righteousness must always be grounded in love and humility. Then is God in it. Then is God in it. So what does this mean? We must strive to be like Jesus. Come on. Did Paul not pray that he, 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 he travailed? 
He travailed for what? He, he travailed that Christ would be what? Formed in us. Amen, somebody. Maybe when we come, apostle, chief apostle, you need, to, you need to preach on the roar of Jesus. You no, know, you need to preach on the roar of Jesus. Amen. I know you can do it some, 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 some service. Amen. But we have, to, we have to strive to be like him, like Christ, who spoke out against everything that he confronted that was not of his father. Amen, sometime. Somebody. So, so this is the thing, and I want to give you this, and, and I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to be closing shortly. What I want to tell you and what I want to share with you is how to identify when the enemy is attacking you. Amen. And, and trying to steal your roar. There's two things that is important that you need to understand about your roar. Okay? God has been dealing with me about the separation of the church from him. I've been preaching a series on come back to God. Because a lot of folk have left God. They don't know it. They've drifted away from God. And actually, my wife uh, taught a, a, a lesson when I was away a month or so ago, and it, it, this is what caused me to, to begin to, to, to ponder this. But the separation of God. And, and so, so the separation of the church from God uh, that the enemy was once able to cause to happen, but the enemy used to operate covertly. I'm going somewhere. The enemy used to, in other words, to, to operate covertly, it means without being openly acknowledged or displayed. Are you, you hear me? In fact, the book of Jude, Jude says, uh, 1 uh, and 4 says, for, for there were certain men that crept. Where my, where my Bible, where my Bible teachers are. There were certain men that crept in unawares. Amen. Who were before of the old ordained to the condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only true Lord, Jesus Christ. This is when the enemy comes in covertly. He sneaks in. How does he sneak in? He sneaks in through false teaching. He, he, watch this. He sneaks in because men in the pulpit, leaders, have, have appetites do, that do not align themselves with the will and the purpose of God. So, so it opens the door, amen, for these to come in. And they're false teachers who crept in. How did they come in? They came in unnoticed. They did not believe in the deity of God and, and that he was the son of God who came to the earth to save us. Therefore, they did not belong to God. Everybody that comes to church does not belong to God. I don't care how much they praise. I don't care how much they worship. We, it's just a reality. We have to understand that that's the time that we're living in because so many people have their own concept of who God is and how to get to God, and there's more than one way to get to God. Come on, somebody. The doctrine of inclusion. They got all of these things going on, amen, and it's not of God, and they're seeping in. I heard one prominent preacher say just a while ago that when it came to the whole idea of sexuality, and this is a major big 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 time preacher he said he said when it comes to sexuality he says I, 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 I'm evolving what, what does that mean that means that that you're leaning into it now yeah, you, you're saying some creed it's just you're seeing some something about it that that kind of no the devil is a liar that is to suggest that what God created is not good enough. When God created man, come on, in his image and his likeness, that is a slap in God's face to say that I want to be something or that I can be something other than what God made me. How can you profess Christianity? How can you profess to know God and you want to change who you are? Come on, somebody. When you really know God, when you really know him, you thank him for who you are. You thank him for who he's making you. You thank him for where he brought you from. Are you hearing me? Sit down. We're almost done. Separation. Separation from faith in Jesus. It reduces the roar, and it creates hypocrisy. So now everything that comes out of you 
is a lie. I ought to take my time here. Because you know why? Because a lot of what you're hearing now is a lie. But we're too lazy. Not this church. We're too lazy to research. We're too lazy to open up our Bibles ourselves. We're in a time now, come on somebody, where the whole, the whole landscape of what it means to be a Christian and be in the church, it has totally changed before our eyes. I'm standing here before you 68 years old. I never thought that I would see anything like I'm seeing in the world today when it comes to the church. You mean the church has, come on somebody, has been reduced to this level, amen, that anything goes? Oh, no, the church done lost its roar. And not every church. Not every church. You know what I'm thankful for? God always have a remnant. God always have a remnant. You know why a lot of people uh, 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 don't have no roar? And it's preached a lot in this church, and it should be preached more everywhere. Because, see, all, a lot of these people that's professing salvation, they ain't got no Holy Ghost. How you going to roar? How, come on, somebody. See, the, the Holy Ghost is your boldness. Come on, somebody. Jesus said that after you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall be what? Witnesses. In other words, you should have a roar. Amen. Against the devil. Boldness. You Come on, sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm, 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 I'm getting ready. Get you need a roar. You need the Holy Ghost. And, and I wrote this down uh, earlier, but let me see if it's still here. I wrote this down because I wanted to say, I wanted to say this uh, when I got up here. Uh, on the day, of, on, on, when they was in the upper room, they had to, they had to tarry. You, you ain't got to tarry now. All you got to do is receive. The Holy Ghost is here now. You, all you got to do. If, some, if somebody's here today and you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking tongues, I dare you to roar right now and ask God to fill you with the power of the Holy Ghost, with fire. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's what we need. Come on, somebody. See, without the Holy Ghost, you can get silenced. Without the Holy Ghost, come on, somebody. Without the Holy Ghost, uh, the, the, the devil can stick a plug in it and call and stop you up, and you won't have nothing to say. Without the Holy Ghost, you, 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 you can't live sinless. And when you're in sin, you can't roar. I said I need somebody to say amen right now. See, I wish I could tell y'all, y'all sit down. I wish I could tell y'all this. I wish I could tell you since I've been saved, I've never sinned. I don't have that testimony. Oh, I'm the only one? Oh. I don't have that testimony. And I know that every time that I found myself where I needed to repent, I didn't have a roar because sin, come on somebody, because sin robs you of your power. It robs you, come on, of the authority. Sin keeps you a slave in the mighty name of Jesus. But when you ask God to forgive you, which takes the Holy Ghost to do, God will restore you and give you your roar back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's finish up with this. Let's finish up with this. I just want to share this with you, and we're going to be done. I wish it was good. I, I, it ain't good as I want it to be. Hallelujah. Let me just give you this, and, and we'll, 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 we'll go. Uh, I, and I did write this in, too. I, I wanted y'all to hear this. The Bible tells us that for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself transforms into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works.
I shared this at the beginning, but I wrote this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down, I'm going to read what I wrote to you. And I wrote it, I'm going to read it just the way I wrote it. Let me tell RFC that you are blessed with two of the greatest revelators of the word of God. And guess what? They didn't creep in. They was ordained by God for this. Watch this. That's why you're blessed. That is why you are blessed. Because God has given them. He's called them. They're not imitators. They're the real thing, y'all. That is why so many, even today, are hating on this ministry. Oh, y'all don't understand. I know. I see in the spirit. I tell my wife all the time, I don't like to try to be a troublemaker. But I see in the spirit, this ministry is under serious attack in the, in the, in the realm of the spirit. And I know it. Because you don't do it like they do it. Mainly because you tell it like it is. And you know what? They can't stop you. That's their, that's their real problem. They can't stop you. No matter what they do, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. They will throw sand and salt in the gas tank. It's a metaphor, but it won't stop you. Because you refuse to give up your roar. You refuse to be silenced because of what you're going through and because of what they're doing. But what is happening now, the enemy, sit down, the enemy has changed his playbook. And, and, and now the approach is that the enemy is, 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 is doing what he wants to do, and he's doing it overtly. Now it is in the open. Because there's things that you can see and witness in the body of Christ and in church services every day that you've never seen happen before. And folk are running behind it. They're falling into it because what? It gives in to what they want to do and how they want to do it. Come on, somebody. And so many people are being, are being led astray because we have preachers in the pulpit who have no backbone to tell the truth, even when it hurts. But I, also, I always tell people, the word cuts going in, and the word cut, cuts coming out. The word, come on, somebody. The word, the, come on, somebody. The word cuts and heals at the same time. That's why you got to open up your mouth. That's why you have to tell the truth. That's why you have to roar. Amen, somebody. Because you're saving somebody's life. I'm going to be done with this. The Bible says we're not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. And the revelation gave to me according to these false teachers and their effectiveness and leading people away. When the word of God is taught falsely, what it does, it desensitizes us to the holiness of God. And when you are desensitized, let me help you. This is, this is really where it gets, gets serious. When you become desensitized, by, 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 by teachings, you become desensitized to the holiness of God. And what that means now, the way you approach God, mm, the way you approach God now is diminished. You no longer have the reverence and the awe because when you're desensitized, you cannot connect with the spirit of God because desensitization of the word of God means that the only way you can operate is in untruth and not the truth. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And when you don't have the truth, you don't have no joy, you don't have no peace, and you have to conjure up and make up ways to get to God. Come on, somebody. You got you to gotta do it yourself when it should be the Holy Spirit that is leading you. Are you hearing this? So we have to understand that false teaching, it desensitizes us to the, to, the, to the holiness of God. And when you become desensitized, you lose the reverence. It changes everything. But God said it like this. But they, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For they that comes to God must believe that he is. When you are desensitized, you're desensitized into what you believe about God. 
And when you desensitize well, what you believe about God, now is your faith compromised. And that's the issue with so many people who can't roar because they've been compromised. We got a lot of compromised Christians. And nobody's saying anything. We let them come to church a week in and week out, and we know they're jacked up. We know they're messed up. And as long as they show up, as long as they fill the seat, as long as they put something in the offering basket, we leave them in the condition that they're in. But the devil is a liar. Oh, God. And one of the things I hate worse than anything is to see a person, a brother or sister that's struggling and somebody that's supposed to be caring for their souls is not reaching out, not embracing them, and not telling them the thing that they need to hear. Come on, somebody. Not in the, I watch. In the spirit, roaring to them the truth in love and in humility, drawing them back into the fold, helping them to see their ways. But when you desensitize, you can't do that. Are you hearing me? Let's go home with this. Let's go home. So how does this work? And this is, again, this is for me. This just helped me to understand what God was showing me about how things are going. One of the ways, when we get desensitized by false teaching, we know that ain't happening in this church. You know how I, I, I do that every now and then just to remind you? You, you're not getting that in this church. You're, not, you're getting the right word in here. But when you become desensitized by the word, it affects your approach to God. And when your approach to God is affected, what it really means, it means that, it means that ob objectively we, 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 we approach God subjectively as opposed to objectively. Okay. In other words, subjectively means it's based on our feelings. And, and see, you can't approach God based on your feelings. Come on, somebody. When you approach God, you got to approach God because he is God. You got to approach God because he is God. Come on, somebody. You approach him because you know he's God. But when it is subjective, you, you, you approach God like this. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. But when it's objectively, it means no feelings are involved. And so when it's objective, you, you, you approach God like this. Are you trying to help me? Come on. Watch it. This is a roar. Help me, Jesus. Are you hearing me? That's what we need to understand. We don't need preaching that desensitizes us from knowing who God is, what the will of God is for our lives. We need teaching like what you're getting here at RFC. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about some teaching that is structured, that they not just giving degrees away. Y'all ain't trying to help me. They not just making it so you stay here, but they, come on, they're putting you to a challenge. Come on, somebody. They're going to know if you love God or not by the time you leave here. And I got to tell y'all something. I'm done. I got to tell y'all something. I ain't seen nobody in this church that, that, that don't give me, that they don't give me the, 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 the to know that they truly love God. All of y'all love God. This, this is strange. No, no, y'all laughing. This is strange. I'm talking about a strange in the sense. You can get a lot of people to follow you, but when it comes to the truth of God's word, you start losing, come on somebody, you start losing numbers, you start losing members, you start losing finance, you start losing a whole lot of stuff. But y'all love, love the Lord. That is why I believe that the plan that God had for this church, because the word of God lives in this house. Amen, somebody. You don't, know, you don't just hear it, but you know it when you get here. Are you hearing me? The work that you're doing, chief apostle and apostle, with these millennials, with these young people, it is amazing. Let me tell you, this is what we need. But you know what? We're not going to see a whole lot of churches do what you do, uh, large churches. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you that, that, that you are doing the will 
on the work of God, and God, God told me to tell you that he's heard your roar. When you kneel down and you pray and you're worshiping God, God says, I hear your roar. Come on, somebody. When you're planning, he gives you a vision and you don't know quite how it's going to happen. He hears your roar because he hears your heart. Can I help you? The greatest roar that you can have is the roar that's in your heart for God. That's the greatest roar. And he gives you the desires of your heart. Are you hearing me? So I want to finish with this, and I pray that no one here will allow themselves to be desensitized. It ain't going to happen. If it happens, it won't be because you got it here. If you are desensitized, it's because you ran after something other than here. My pastor used to tell me all the time, my pastor used to say, son, home cooking is the best cooking. You need to get it here. Are you hearing me? You need to stay here. Now, Mario, you've been here how long? Huh? Since you, since you was how old? Who else been here a long time? Who else been here as children? Apostle, do you know what type of feat that is? You, you know, but you know what it takes to have that testimony, oh my God, that means something in this house is being done right. That means that in spite of all you've gone through, the roar, has, you've maintained your roar. I want anyone that has, feels like your roar has been challenged and you may have given in a little bit. Don't be afraid and don't be ashamed. This is where you get your roar back. That's, come on somebody, did I hear the restore of the roar? Why do you think that came out? Because God knows somebody needs to be restored in their roar. Amen? Apostle uh, 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 um, Irving preached us happy last night or yesterday. Amen, somebody. We got blessed this morning. Apostle Jenny and Apostle Toby, but this is, the, this is the hour that we make the decision right now that we're going to get our roar back. Come on, somebody, because I don't know about you, but the devil is constantly trying to rob me day in and day out. Even in my sleep, he's trying to steal my roar. Amen. But you got to make up in your mind that no matter what comes, you know what David said? David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. You know what he was saying? I will roar all times. I'm going to roar before the battle. I'm going to roar in the battle. I'm going to roar after the battle. Come on, somebody. His praises shall continually be upon my lips. That is a roar. Are you hearing me? And somebody is here today, and you just like David. And you, David said, this poor man cried out. There may be somebody here right now, and that you got to cry down on the inside because maybe you've lost something. You know that you've missed a step, and you want to gain back the step that you lost. All you got to do is open your mouth from where you stand and begin to declare the goodness of the Lord over your life. Come on, somebody. He knows what's in your heart. He knows your thoughts are far off. He knows the very intents of your heart. He knows where you're lost. He knows what you need back. Just tell him. Allow for God to, to, to restore you. That's what this is about. It's about restoring the roar. That's why God gave it to apostle. Because he knows some of us need our roar back. Amen, somebody. I got my roar back when he called me. When he reached out to me and he told me what the theme was going to be, I started looking at myself. I wasn't looking at nobody else. I'm like, Lord, how can I preach this? What is my roar like? What is my roar? Have I been roaring like I ought to? Have I been praying like I ought to? Have I been fasting like I ought to? And, and when you called me, I started doing fast. God just kept putting me on fast. Put me on fast. Put me on fast. And I didn't realize it, but God was restoring my, my roar. Come on, somebody. He was helping me, come, me to become more sensitive to his spirit. Because sometimes we can get so busy that we lose our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we got to step back. 
Amen. And I've been blessed to get both here today because I've treated this, this has been like a vacation for me. Apostle, you know how to help somebody get their roar back. Come on, somebody. Put us up in a room. Give us food. Come on, somebody. Tell us we ain't got to do nothing all day. We can just relax. Come on. That gave me time to restore. Come on, somebody. And to rest. Amen. And then come here and receive the word each night. It's something about receiving the word when you've had some rest. Come on, somebody. And my roar has been restored. I don't know about you. And I don't know about you over here, but my role has been restored as a result of this gathering. Amen, somebody. And let me help you, and I'm done with this. I don't, I, at the risk of being redundant, I started getting my role back when, 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 when Apostle Toby started preaching. And when she gave her testimony. And I started thinking about my testimony. And I started thinking about my wife's testimony. And I said, whoa, God, this is good right here. I didn't realize it, but God would restore my roar because I began to get excited. Come on, somebody. The decimal of my roar had gone down a little bit, you know, because, like I say, we get busy. But the decimal start going back up in the spirit. Amen. And I start hearing it in my spirit, the roar. And that's where you need the roar. You need the roar in your belly. You need it in your spirit. In your spirit, man, there has to be a roar in the name of Jesus. Give God some praise. Everybody's been laid hands on. Everybody's been prayed for. I'm not going to prolong the service. But what I will say to you tonight, whatever you have to do, whatever you got to move out of the way, and only you know, this, this, this is for the pulpit to the back. Whatever has to be moved, whatever adjustment you have to make, whatever is, 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 is coming against you that has the, has, has the ability, and you know it has the ability to, to, to reduce and desensitize you, don't allow it because it's not always the word that we hear that is incorrect or the false teaching, but it's sometimes what we uh, 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 um, um, avail ourselves to. It's the thing that we sometimes open ourselves up to. And unknowingly, we take things in and we don't realize it. I pray night, tonight that every, everyone's roar. Come on, let's close. Close your eyes and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, this was your plan. God, this was for your purpose. God, this anointed house, this anointed man and woman of God, these anointed gatherings were for your purpose, for, for what you wanted to do in the earth through them, Father God. And God, we thank you that you have given us men and women and servants after your own heart, God. Oh, God, to bring forth, God, the word, amen, to serve in every capacity, Lord God, to make the gatherings to be all that you ordained them to be. And I bless and I ask God that you would bless every heart, that you would give everyone in here tonight an ear to continue to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that everyone that may be under attack right now, where the enemy is trying to desensitize them, oh God, I ask God that you would give them the power and the authority once again, oh God, that you would raise them up and that no weapon that would be formed against them would prosper, that would come against them. Oh God, we thank you right now for your, for your awesome, holy presence in this house and in our, in, our, in our tabernacles, Father God. And we ask that you would move mightily, oh God, as only you can, oh God, to bring restoration to our hearts and to our minds concerning the roar in our hearts. And we give you praise for it. And we give you glory. And we give you honor. And we do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God some praise. Come on, give him some praise better than that. No, not, not for me. Give him the praise. Come on, give him the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on up, Apostle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together and let God know we appreciate the vessel that he sent to deliver the word of God. Amen. Praise God. That was wonderful. That was amazing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you feel like you got blessed tonight? Praise God. Amen. All right. Well, on behalf of Revival for Christ Club, our national ministry, all of our affiliates, all of our friends around the world, we want to thank you for attending Apostles Conference 23. It's been one of the best outside conferences we've ever had. We're really grateful and thankful to God for it. Thankful for the great apostles that took our invitations and came and ministered. And I just want to say, well, after all this preaching, all this ministering, all this stuff that's happened, can your roar fill, uh, feed a multitude? You need to find out if it can. <laughs> Praise God. We love you each and every one, and we thank you so much. Uh, let's just give the Lord one just praise. Thank you, God, for the word. Thank you for the spirit. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for every single thing that happened that caused people to draw closer to you. And, God, we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. I'm Chief Apostle Timothy Vanner. I'm the founder of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries right here in Moore, Oklahoma. The Flame Network is a new extension of our ministry. It's an extension to give opportunity to those that are filled with the Spirit and the power of God. We want a network that will show the flame, the fire, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And that's why this network was created. If you'd like to help support us as we continue to spread this flame around the world, all you have to do is send a donation to Money Sign RFC Roar at Cash App. Send a little donation and it will go a long way as we spread the fire and the word of the Spirit of God around the world. We're dedicated to the glory of only one individual. His name is Jesus Christ. Revival for Christ Club wants to be a flame of illumination to you. 